All right. Welcome again. Today I'll be covering our menu sequence. We'll have a common three course meal sequence. This one, again, for your first course, will consist of either you could decide to have a soup, a salad, and or an appetizer. So meaning you could decide to have a soup as a first course, or you could decide to have a salad as a first course, or you could decide to have an appetizer as a first course. Now, the second course will, of course, will be your entree, and then your last course will consist of dessert. Now, this is the traditional, the most common three-course meal sequence, right? Uh, some people as well don't, don't necessarily want to eat a dessert sometimes. So then you could have a three-course meal that could consist of a, a soup, a salad, then an entree, right? Or you could have an appetizer, uh, then a salad, then an entree. So it just depends on who you're serving, what you're serving, or what your client or what your guests want, right? So it just depends. But this is the traditional kind of three-course meal, whether if it's a soup, salad, or appetizer first. Uh, now, they're not all combined. You could combine some of them. Like, uh, for instance, for our bistros, we make appetizer salads. That you could have as well, right? So those are the basic three courses that you have no, normally on a menu sequence. Let's see. I don't know why it's not letting me move on. There you go. Let's see. There you go. All right. Now the second one we have here is a four course meal sequence where you have your first course and your second course can consist of any of these below, right? Your first course could have an hors d'oeuvre, uh, then you could have a potage, right, type of course. Now your potage is a soup course, okay? Uh, or you could have a oof. Oof is a A course. And then your last one is your salad course. So you get to decide which, which two you wanna serve as a first and second course. So you could decide to first have an hors d'oeuvre, then have a salad, then you have your entree, then you have your dessert, or you could decide I wanna do an egg dish first, then I wanna have a salad, then I wanna have an entree, then you have a dessert. So those are different ways or different options on how you could develop a four course meal sequence. So again, it could be an hors d'oeuvre, it could be a, a poutage, which is a soup dish, your oof, which is your egg dish, or your salad dish. Right, so you get to decide how you can incorporate uh, that course into your four course meal. Now, five course meal sequence. Now, this is kind of tr usually the traditional way on how we do our, our bistros if we're doing a five course meal. Our first course will be a salad. The second course will be a poutage, which is a soup. Third course will be a sorbet or intermenso, which is a palate cleanser. Your fourth course will be an entree. Your fifth course will be a dessert. Now, again, the other thing you have to take into consideration is the meal sequence and whether or not your dishes are hot and cold or cold to hot. So normally right here, you see the first course is a salad. So that course will be a cold course. Then your second course is a potage. That'll be a hot course. Your third course is an intermezzo or sorbet. That is a cold course. And then your entree will be, of course, be a hot dish. And then your fifth course could be either cold, room temperature, or hot, right? So you kind of want to, when you develop your, your courses, you kind of want to take that into consideration of going from either cold to hot or hot to cold or vice versa. So you want to make sure you're, you're kind of playing and you're stimulating the, the guest's appetite and their flavor profile and their tongue, right? Because, again, you want to make sure you want to stimulate everything, meaning the different flavors, the sweet, salty, bitter, umami, the same thing whether cold items or hot items, so on and so forth. So, again, you, when you develop your menu, you could go from cold to hot, back to cold, so on and so forth. 
Now we have our classical seven course meal. Now this one will consist of our hors d'oeuvres. Second course will be your potage, which is what? Your, potato, your, your soup dish. Your third course will be your poisson. Poisson, now this will be your first uh, fish course, okay? Your fourth course will be your sorbet or your intermezzo, which is your palate cleanser. Your fifth course will be your entree. Your sixth course will be your salad. Your seventh course will be your dessert. Now for your entree, it could be uh, uh, a chicken dish, a duck dish, stuff like that, okay? Not big pieces of meat protein for your entree, okay? Now our classical French 11 course degustation menu. Now your first course will be an hors d'oeuvre. Second course will be your potage, which is your soup. Your third course is your poisson, which is your, your seafood course or your fish course. Now your fourth one will be your entree. Your fifth one will be your releves, your releve, your butcher joints of meat. So that could be uh, your leg or lamb, stuff like that, bigger pieces of meat. Number six will be your sorbet. Number seven will be your roti, okay? Uh, and then your number eight will be your legumes, okay? Now your legumes uh, will be your vegetable dishes, okay? Then you have your number nine, your intermets. Your intermets are what in the United States you consider your desserts, okay? So you're like, chef, well, that doesn't say desserts, but in French cuisine, intermets are what in the United States, what you think of sweet desserts. Number 10 will be savroie, savroie, okay? okay? Will be actually kind of savory style of kind of like hors d'oeuvres or overly spiced or seasoned hors d'oeuvres, okay? That will be smaller. Then number 11 will be desserts, and that course will consist of fruits or nuts as your dessert, not what in the United States we can think of desserts are, okay? Now for your classic uh, French 17 course degustation menu, your first course will be your hors d'oeuvre. Number two will be your potage. Uh, number three will be your oeufs, which is your egg dish, okay? Number four will be your farinois, which is your rice or pasta dishes. Number five will be your poisson, which is your fish course. Number six will be your entree, which is the first technically like meat, meat course, okay? Number seven will be your sorbet. Number eight will be your releves, which is your other meat course. Number nine course will be your roti, which is your roasted item. Will be your like your roasted uh, leg of lamb or roasted uh, prime rib or dish. Number 10 will be your legumes, which is a vegetable course. Number 11 will be your salads. Number 12 will be your buffet fraud, which is your cold uh, appetizer dishes are kind of plated like terrines, pate on croutes, stuff like that. And then uh, number 13 will be your close intermets. So I'm going to just take you back to the previous slide. Now, what you start to look at is when you start off the sequence of, of courses, I mean, 17 courses is, is a lot of courses. And That'll take you like maybe three to four hours to, to consume or eat, right? So again, when you talk about developing your courses, you got to think about how many courses you have, how long do you have to serve your guests, right? If you're going to be a guest for this, make sure you clear out a couple of hours because that'll take you a long time to consume or eat. The more courses you have, the smaller the portions you're going to have. Uh, that you're going to serve to your guests, right? But always consider this, that if you ever want to make your degustation longer or bigger, you could decide also to uh, go have more courses in between the poisson dish. So you could decide, you know, where number five is at. You could serve a vegetable course before the fish, and then you could also serve a starch dish 
after the fish, or also known as your farinoa, right? Uh, so you can make this a little bit longer if you want, because either A, you could serve it, your starch and vegetable with the course, or you could decide to serve it separately as another course, either before or after you receive the dish. So that could also become one of the actual courses. So you can make this even longer if you want it to, right? So it just depends. So again, going back, you know, number 10, that's your legumes. And, and and from the beginning to end, you know, you start light, right? When you, with fish to chicken, and then you work your way to your roti, right? Or your relevs, your meat courses. So you start light, and then you start getting a little bit heavier and heavier and heavier, and then you start working your way down light. That's why you, you see a course of a salad towards the end. Why? Because you want to balance things out. You know, salads also act as a form of a palate cleanser so that you could get ready for the next course as well. Okay. Number 14, you have your courses, your savroa, which is our savory uh, style type of hors d'oeuvres as well, uh, highly seasoned as well. Uh, number 15 will be your fromage, which will be your, your cheese course. And number 16th will be your, your desserts, which will be your uh, actual uh, poached pear fruit dishes. Now, I know I did say 17 courses, but usually at the end of service, after dessert, coffee or tea is always served at the end of the meal. Okay. So, again, I know for, you know, it's a lot of information, but uh, this will help you develop your five course meal uh, and your. Uh, seventh course degustation menu okay now examples of these courses or d'oeuvres there are two types of d'oeuvres hot and cold d'oeuvres so you could decide to serve hot or cold d'oeuvres for one of your courses it should be light nicely seasoned and a great care of attention to detail is needed examples could be canopies caviar oysters uh, small composed salads barquettes beignets croquettes crostades, risoles, tartlets, etc. Uh, other actual examples can be canapes de anchois, beignets a la italienne, salad de portugaise, croquettes chasseur, risole natua, tartlets au gnocchi, right? Those are examples of hors d'oeuvres. Now for your potage course, you have soups. Soups are divided into two categories. You have your clear soups, like your consommés, right? Uh, example of one would be a consommé columbine. And then you have your thick soups. Your thick soups could consist of purees, coulis, or bisque, right? Number two, you have your cream soups. Number three, you have your velouté soups. Number four, you have your thick and bouillon soups. And number five, you have international soups. So you have a wide array of different soups. The same thing, you could have multiple soup courses within your, your menu sequence if you want to add that. Examples of soups could be puree du berry, cream rene margot, velite and luce, putage derby, putage minestra. Okay, so those are examples of names of the soup dishes. Okay, oofs. Now your A course. Examples of A courses could be oofs au gratin, omelette a la Florentine, oofs a la Provençale. Okay, so chef, why are you giving me all these examples? Because these are examples of, of things that you could incorporate into your French menu. Okay. Your farinois course, right? This course contains your starches consisting of flour. Examples could be your gnocchi, could be polenta dishes, could be ravioli or pasta dishes. Poisson, this course consists of your fish, your shellfish course. Examples of poisson dishes are truites au vin rouge, bouillabaisse à la Parisienne, papillettes de sol, crevettes frites. Your entree, your entree is the first course before the main course. Entrees consist of a small portion cuts, okay? What that means, 
It could be a chicken breast, could be a leg, could be a thigh, could be a, a pork chop. Examples of entrees are supreme de volaille a la hongrois, poulet saute chaussure. Then after your entree, you have sorbet. Again, a sorbet is served to cleanse the palate and get you ready for the next course. Sorbets can be made out of juices, liqueurs, and or wines. Uh, an example of one would be sorbet au citron. Now you could have multiple sorbets or intermezzo. So if you decide, oh, well, maybe I could have a fish course, then I could have an intermezzo. Then you could have your entree. Then after your entree, you could have another intermezzo to get you ready for your relevs or your roti or so on and so forth. So you can have technically multiple sorbet or intermezzo dishes. You can have multiple vegetable dishes. You can have multiple starch dishes as well. But you never would sequence them one after another. You would have to incorporate one and then have another type of uh, course, right? So you could have an intermezzo, then you could have a vegetable course, then you could have a starch course, then you could have a protein, or you could have an intermezzo, protein, then a vegetable, starch, so on and so forth. Relève, okay, relèves are larger than entrees and come from butcher's joints. They are the second meat course of a former dinner. Examples of relèves are gigot de agneau a la menthe or jamon frais. Now these are big pieces of meat that are either gonna be carved on a side station on a gueridon or already plated on the plate and served to the guests. And again, these relèves could have a starch or vegetable with them or they could be served before or after the relief. Roti. The roti is the piece de resistance. Large whole birds are brought out and are served tableside service. Consists of poultry, beef, pork, or feathered game, venison, and furried animals. Okay. So again, make sure the roti, that's the main, that's the main meal out of the, all the courses. Legume course are now returning from, again, so from the beginning, the courses are now returning from heavy to light. So you started off light, started getting heavier, then you're starting to get light again. Uh, the course is served with the accompanying sauce. Examples of legume dishes are champignon à la crème, aubergine à la neopolitaine, chefleur à la bolognaise. Then your salad. There are two types of salads, simple salads and composed salads. A simple salad will be very simple, you know, mixed, tossed with a couple, few ingredients with the proper dressing. Composed salad will be a nice, good arranged salad. Examples of simple salads are salad de tomate, salad pommes de terre, salad de chou rouge, which is your, your cabbage salad. Uh, example of a composed salad will be a uh, salad niçois, salad Waldorf, those are our examples of French salads or dishes. Buffet froid, okay? These items in this course are served cold with the appropriate sauce. So examples will be galantines, terrines, pâtés, rillettes, all those different items will be utilized for your buffet froid. Intermets. Now, intermets consist of a sweet, such as a souffle, a pudding, a risole, crab. So again, like I told you guys earlier, what you consider desserts are in French technically mostly intermets, right? So an example would be crepes a la Normandy, souffle a la chocolat, uh, beignets de ananas, which is bananas beignets. So again, so when you're thinking about the certs, technically speaking, when you're talking about French, when it says intermets, it's usually those types of desserts. So that's why with uh, your Scoffier book, you're able to see with the section of intermets, what type of, the, of items or sweet items you have in that course. After your intermets, meaning you're going from sweet, right? So. Your, your palate's already overwhelmed with sweetness, so then you need something that's gonna, gonna combat that, right? Balance it off a little bit more. So you have your savories or your savroir. 
right, are almost like hot hors d'oeuvres, but the difference is that they're slightly seasoned more. Because you got to remember that you've been eating a lot of these courses. Your palate is getting overwhelmed. So you need something that's seasoned a little bit more so that you're able to taste it. Some savories are served on toast or canopies, and some are savory souffles and sandwiches. Examples of these could be canapes, canopy Diane, tartlets a la Florentine. Uh, so those are examples of savoir. Okay. Fromage. Well, I love cheese. I'm sure a lot of you guys love cheese as well. Uh, you have many types of cheeses are offered, right? Starting from your fresh cheese, ricotta, cottage, mascarpone, semi-soft, baby Swiss, gouda, fontina, semi-hard, gruyere, Swiss, hard, cotija, asiago, parmigiano, reggiano, romano, blue vein cheeses. Examples would be Maytag, Stilton, Gorgonzola. Now, this doesn't mean that you're going to provide all these uh, cheeses on your course. It could be just one cheese, right? It just means it's a cheese course, right? Uh, so don't, don't, you don't have to overwhelm them with multiple cheeses. It could be just one, one cheese uh, on your actual dish that's decorated with a, with a little bit of greens, some type of dressing, whatnot, or a sauce. And then you have your actual desserts, right? The last course in the meal in which usually fruits or nuts are served. So this is the part where those fruit items are either poached or cooked in a syrup, stuff like that. That is your last course. Then after your dessert is what are you gonna serve? Of course, you're gonna serve your tea or coffee. 